In 2019, Capital One got breached. It was a high-tech bank robbery, and you may be a victim. A massive data breach affecting 100 million people. The data breach resulted in the exposure of personal information of over 100 million people in the US and 6 million people in Canada. The exposed data included stuff like names, addresses, zip codes, phone numbers, email addresses, days of birth, and self-reported income. Also comprised of the data were customer credit cards, credit limits, balances, payment history, contact information, and fragments of transactional data. This single data breach ended up costing Capital One around 80 million plus dollars. And in this video, we are going to be replicating that same scenario from SSRF to accessing the EC2 instance metadata and then just finding credit cards. All right. All right, people, the platform we're going to be using to go over this lab scenario is called Pong Labs. It is a platform that has real world bite sized labs for cybersecurity warriors everything cloud related for both red teamers and blue teamers right as you can see here it says experienced immersive real bite size lab for cyber warriors everything from beginners to pros right they have everything from azure aws and uh, gcp so soon enough they will be launching a paid tier for now they just have free labs about 20 plus i think free labs you can go over they'll be launching a paid tier soon enough and uh, they gave us a discount code so if you ever want to sign up use the discount code it'll be linked in the description instead of paying like 20 bucks a month you can pay like 16 instead of paying 200 bucks a month you can pay like 160 so it's a win-win for us and we get to learn more cloud security so they cater to security ninjas they cater to people that are just starting out and people that are developing expertise bite-sized labs like i said both blue team and red team labs and uh we can start poning so we are gonna jump straight into it let me launch my cali instance and we can start hacking. All right, people, this is the lab scenario you're gonna be doing. You can turn the lab on and you get an entry point and you have to submit a flag to complete. They give you the scenario. We are gonna be hacking into a company called Huge Logistics and um, mapping out a lot of stuff, investigating links to the cloud infrastructure, mapping out any potential risk ex exposure, right? And then they have some prerequisites, learning outcomes, understanding EC2 instance metadata service, the AWS CLI difficulties beginner and the focus is red team. And then they also give us the real world context, which was the 2019 Capital One breach. And then they just give an overview. And then there's the walkthrough down here if you want to go th through that. So if you're ever stuck, you're not going to be left guessing. You can take a look at the walkthrough and then continue from there. But we have an IP address, so we're going to get started. We can um, use dig to investigate, but this doesn't really return anything. So we can also use who is and see if we can find a domain that this maps to. This is not going to give us anything. It's just going to tell us that it's owned by Amazon Technologies. So you can make the assumption that it's hosted on an EC2, right? Which is an informed assumption for the most part. But I'm not too sure how they map this out with like DNS stuff because we can't really find the domain we're supposed to map to, but they do give it to us in the walkthrough. So the domain is called huge logistics.pong so we can add this to our etsy hosts and then continue from there but let's try that echo ip let me actually just copy this so that i don't mistype which is something i do pretty frequently you want to add this to etsy hosts yes but i'm gonna copy this cancel and do this as the pseudo user because it's going to tell me that my permissions are denied so let's move on to the browser and see what this looks like all right people this is the browser we can paste the ip address and um we'll see where it leads to and it leads to huge pwn logistics this is their landing page a lot of floral ipsum so you know this is useless stuff have a bunch of functionality we can investigate later on here and you could also start your content discovery run some durabasta or dirt search and whatever but personally even at work i want to see where this stuff is coming from as you can see there's a lot of images 
and probably some other files that are hosted externally and we want to know where they're coming from are they using a cdn or are they hosting this stuff in s3 where is it coming from so you look at the page source and you could also find some developer comments in here which is usually akin to ctfs and this is a ctf right so as you can see the images are coming from an s3 bucket which we can investigate and um not much else that is interesting so we could try open this in a new tab and see where it leads us what we want to do though is go to the root of this s3 bucket and see if we can access it and as you can see we have some issues already ac having access to this s3 bucket so this could be a potential finding and that's the name of the bucket they have a folder a directory called backup there's something in backup there's also the flag in backup there's a flag in the root directory and then there's another directory called web so let's see if we can access any of these directory we can start with web where they host the images and um yes and it's just images nothing too fancy we could also try access the backup which had the flag and some other file but we get access denied so this is probably what we want to get access to and we know that this is an ssrf challenge so we need to find functionality that can lead to ssrf we can investigate some other pages about us this is what services nothing here it's the drop down which has the gallery and yeah all these images just hosted in s3 error page this just shows the error page add link doesn't lead anywhere contact us you can get in touch probably using some google maps api for this stuff fun stuff and then status if we go to the status page which is not gonna load okay it loads it has a button we can check out what the button does the value of the button is set to default to this domain huge logistics status .pone. we could add this to our etsy host and investigate it as well but let's see what the actual button does if we hit check um it seems to point to this domain right so we already know where this is going to lead ssrf let's open this up what we want right now is um burp suite if i can navigate to this pane okay there we go okay so burp suite is open we can move it to our second window and then i personally don't like this stacked look but for now we could uh rerun this request in the proxy if we go here uh where to go here it is here it is here it is i don't like this so i'm gonna make this bigger we could uh, send this to the repeater and start looking at it right it just returns whatever this is but we want to use burp collaborator is what i wanted to use so we can see if we can actually introduce our own domain and get a hit so if we send this it returns whatever that is if we go back to burp suite and poll you can see that we got a hit from the ip address that leads to huge logistics phone. so ssrf is a thing here what we want to do now is go back to logistics and if you know anything about the instance metadata it hosts a lot of sensitive information about your ec2 instance from its access keys to ec2 roles and all the fun stuff you can do a bit more research about it but for now if you don't know the ip address of the instance metadata it's, it's always going to be the same it's always going to be the same which is that 169.254.169.254 right commonly ec2 instances can be configured with iam roles and that allows the ec2 instance to interact with other services and so admin roles can use the roles temporary security credentials from the instance metadata service and so if you leave this open you are opening yourself up to definite compromise so if we go to the ip address and then latest and then metadata metadata how do you pronounce that right it returns a 200 if we scroll down we can see that uh it is open to us and we have a lot of things we can look through there's iam 
metrics, network stuff, host name, events, AMI ID, just a lot of, you know, sensitive stuff. What we want to go to is to IAM and see what we have there. One mistake usually people make, I used to make this mistake, is if there's a trailing forward slash, add it, right? Because if you just go to IAM, you're not going to get anything. Okay, that just embarrassed me. It did return something. That works in the browser, I think. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Latest meta data I am without the slash. Wow, so it works. I'm just dumb, I guess. Okay, so we have info, which we can look at. This just gives us I am information and we can read it. Um, instance profile ARN, ARN instance profile ID, right? Some stuff you can report as findings, but if we go back, we want to go to security credentials, was it? It's security credentials for metadata pwned as we access. Copy that, add that, send the request, and um, we get a lot of stuff. We get the access key, secret key, and a, the token. So we can set this up and um, see what this role or what these keys give us. If we go back here, make this bigger. You want an AWS configure, and I will use the profile and set it to profile named SSRF. Come back here, copy the access key ID, paste that. If you like the way my terminal looks and just my the feel of my Kali, I use i3 desktop and everything is just default, right? And then we also need to set up this thing right here, which is the token. AWS configure set AWS session token, I think. I think that's how it is. And then we also need to do that for the profile, SSRF. And then we paste the token that didn't give us an error, so it should have worked. AWS STS. What's the command? I always forget this stuff. Yes. Okay. AWS STS get caller identity for the profile SSRF. And uh, yeah, we can see that we have this axis. That's the ARN. That's the account, and then the user ID hit Q to quit. So now that we have access to this EC2 instance IAM credentials, or just IAM credentials in general, this is IAM, not like the EC2 credentials. So let's see if we can access the S3 bucket. It's huge logistics storage. That's the name, that's the name. I'm just gonna copy this. So if we go back to our terminal, AWS, S3 LS, the name, is that it? Profile, SSRF. Yes, we have access, we can list that. But do we really need access to list considering you can open it in the browser? That's a good question. That's a good question. But considering it didn't work with like the profile, then I guess we do. Uh, what we wanna do is open up the backup. We have backup, but we also need the forward slash so we can actually list the stuff. We have CC export and then the flag. What we wanna do now is AWS S3 copy S3. Copy this so that we can actually download the files. Copy the name. And then you want to copy it to this directory right here. Bad request. Why? Because we didn't put the profile. That's actually pretty stupid. I'm not gonna lie. I should have said the default profile. Okay, that worked. And so now we also want the flag. Txt. Okay, so if we clear our screen, ls, we have two files here. 
and they're both not empty right we have the flag and we have this if we had the cc thing as you can see these are visa cards so this is what the hacker in uh, 2019 had access to about a hundred million records and in this case it's literally just visa cards the card number and this is probably the cvv and then the expiration date and then we also have um the flag we can catch the flag and then we can finish this but outside of this at the end of the at the bottom of the challenge they also go into defense how we can guard ourselves against this for whatever aws environments we have right uh enabling um, enabling version 2 of the metadata service if at all and then there's also some reading hacker one reports blogs etc so, all right people this is it for this video this is how capital one was hacked back in 2019 if you enjoyed this video do let me know in the comments we will be doing more pwned labs videos from here on out because we want to get better at hacking aws and like I said, they will be launching a subscription service soon enough. You can find the discount code in the description below for a couple bucks off. So you can save money. You see, I'm doing you guys a solid, giving you information, discount codes. Hey man, if you like the video, maybe a like and a subscribe would, uh, would be nice. But apart from that, I will see you in the next one. Peace.